ජීවිතේ වැඩිපුර ලැබෙන හොඳම දේවල් දෙන්න දැන් SLT Broadband වෙති 75% දක්වා වැඩිපුර ඩේටා සතුට ජනවාරි 15 වෙනිදා සිට ශ්‍රී ලංකා ටෙලිකොම් making headlines on first at 9 in full swing the joint opposition says that all necessary measures are in motion to obtain a parliamentary majority UNP however asks where the majority is federal requirement chief minister of northern province sir vigneshwaran insists on the country moving forward under a federal system uncertainty experts elaborate on provisions within the constitution over premier's position the only thing they can do is to go to parliament get a no confidence motion the constitutional provisions that kick in will require certain amendment 19th amendment there is a way how to appoint the prime minister calls for stability mahasang express concern over the country's political uncertainty plot made in russia 13 russian nationals among the indicted in russia's meddling in us elections A very good evening. I'm Katrina Chang, and welcome to First at Nine. On to your top story tonight. The joint opposition says all necessary measures are set in motion to obtain the parliamentary majority towards the government of the Sri Lanka Freedom Party. Members of the joint opposition expressed their views to media last evening after discussion with former President Mahinda Rajapaksha. In the meantime, the topic of the government moving forward, along with the Prime Minister, was on the agenda. During talks held between the UMP parliamentarian and the Premier today, making a special statement, the Prime Minister yesterday affirmed that he will continue to be the Premier. Far as I am concerned, I am carrying on as the Prime Minister because under the law and convention, I don't see any reason why I should. A discussion was held on the stance of the Prime Minister last night between the members of the Joint Opposition and former President Mahinda Rajapaksha at the former President's official residence in Vijayaramaya. Accumulating the necessary parliamentary majority for the United People's Freedom Alliance was also discussed. अगर मैं तुम्हारा प्रकाश और गुटकर लकी न हो आदमी माध्य हम हुए तो तुम्हारे आइंगे नवाचन नहीं है नहीं तो मैं क्रिया मार के अपने हैं कि आंधु को व्यवस्था वानु है तुम्हारा दिक्कत में काटियो तो करके नहीं आना है तो मैं आवे He came to power under the constitution and he will have to leave under the constitution if it doesn't back him. They sought permission in parliament to establish a government, saying SLFP and the UNP get together. When it is over, whatever the logic they come up with, they don't have the mandate now. Therefore, the president can appoint a new prime minister. That's what we seek. No, it is not ours. It's an SLFP government, and a minister of the government can accept it. Those are the rules and the regulations made up by the prime minister. the same parliament can change it we don't have to follow the letters of the book you will see who has more parliamentarians in the immediate future it has already begun it is not us who are openly criticizing the leader of the unp how many times did we say that it is not going to happen we want the whole country defeating him in the meantime numerous politicians continue continue to express their views on the issues manifested within the national government people of this country gave the mandate to the president and the prime minister to move the country forward setting aside party politics i hope they will not discard that request i hope people will respond to those who are going to cross over for money and drive the country towards an ill fate during the next election what is more important than criticizing each other is making changes according to the 90th the amendment of the country the president will inform the people of this country about it during the coming days me rate janatawa denuwath karai api pahadiliwa kiyenawa we clearly say that the president will never take a decision which is not conducive to the country the president thinks that he was given a considerable mandate from the people to work for the country although there are different discussions in the country these days the president is determined to move forward with a stable plan whilst comprehending the shortcomings of the government aba tulo tibena agamati 
The Prime Minister is the chief respondent in the bonds camp. We ask him as to why he cannot bring Arjuna Mahendran to Sri Lanka, just like he brought him from Singapore to give the post of the central bank governor. He must have doubts that if he loses his position, he might have to go before the law. We request the Prime Minister to respect democracy and step down from the post. In the meantime, parliamentarians of the United National Party held discussions with the Prime Minister Ranil Vikramasinghe on the issues surrounding the Premiership and the government. We can't let anyone remove our leader from the post of Prime Minister and we stand with him. We also trust the President because whoever lays claim, he was appointed by us. We feel that he is under pressure at the moment. It's been a week now and Susil Premajanta still can't show the majority. What we have to say is that say what you have, let alone showing the majority. In the backdrop of the political fallout between the two main parties in the coalition government, some legal experts say the president can remove the prime minister from the positions. It is, however, a common theme that the cabinet of ministers should continue to function in order to maintain stability within the country. The only thing they can do is to, you know, to go to parliament, get a no-confidence motion, oust the prime minister and install whoever has got the pleasure and the power in Parliament, but that has a difficulty because parliamentarians can be bought and sold. So what they say today may be different if they are paid a greater sum. So one has to be very careful of all things, be mindful of it. Now in the present political scenario where we find that the members of the UPFA and the newly formed Podujana Peramuna and the SLFP have indicated here to His Excellency the President that they do not wish to remain in the United National Front-led coalition government or the national government any longer, the constitutional provisions that kick in will require certain amendments. You will find that there is provision if Either if the national government comes to an end and his extent the president has to dissolve the cabinet and appoint a new cabinet of 30 or in the case of a motion of no confidence, in either case a new prime minister and ministers will have to be appointed and in those circumstances his excellency the president will then go back to the power of appointment under article 42.4 and appoint as prime minister someone who his excellency considers commands the confidence of parliament. According to 1978 constitution, 19th amendment, there is a way how to appoint the prime minister. And also the only issue under the 19th amendment, the president with his discretion cannot remove the president, that's all. Other than that, if the prime minister defeat the budget or facing for a non-confident motion or after handing over letter, he can resign. But if the prime minister is resisting or not agree to resign, then there is a way to remove the Prime Minister. President of Sri Lanka, what he can do, if he is confident in the Parliament, if there is a member from any political party, if he can win the heart of all the other MPs, as well as if he is having the faith of all the MPs, that you need 113 votes. He can be appointed as a Prime Minister. So Prime Minister post is not a fixed one. Prime Minister post can be changed. It is So Prime Minister should work under the guidance of the President. I think the important element is whether the cabinet of ministers continues to function. And for the cabinet of ministers to function, Article 48.2 states that, amongst other things, the parliament rejects the appropriation bill or passes a vote of no confidence, the cabinet of ministers shall stand dissolved. So then it would require a vote of no confidence, uh, which is a simple majority in parliament, or the rejection of the appropriation bill, which is the budget, which will be uh, later on in the year. So uh, really speaking, that is the key element. So is there a chance that a vote of no confidence could be passed against the government? And that is questionable. Um, obviously, one further provision is that parliament itself could be dissolved, but then that would require two-thirds majority in parliament. So as it stands, removing the prime minister would really require a vote of no confidence on cabinet. The country's prevailing political uncertainty has not gone unnoticed by the Mahasangha. Chief Registrar of the Askiriya chapter, Most Venerable Madhagamada Mahanandatera today said that although the future for the government was outlined before, it went unheeded. Meanwhile, Chief Prelate of the Malwata chapter, Most Venerable Timbatuwa Vishri Sumangatera yesterday also highlighted the repercussions of any political uncertainty. Chief Registrar of Dasgiriya Chapter, Most Venerable Madhagama Dhamma Nandatera, addressed the media on the instability presently manifested within the country. 
We see that clashes which existed within political parties came to the surface following the election results and it has led the country to a state of instability. That is a sad situation. A few months ago, we pointed out to the government the course of governance that should be adopted in the future, yet we see that they failed to listen to it. We especially hope that the party of Mahindra Rajapaksha, which won the election, the president and the prime minister, should maintain stability in the country, giving prominence to the betterment of the people of this country and the security of the country while paying attention to the economic situation. We also hope that they will not misuse the mandate of the people for their own benefit. In the meantime, releasing a media communique last evening, Chief Prelate of the Malwata chapter, Most Venerable Tibbatua Vishri Sumangalatera, said that the political uncertainty currently manifesting within the country following the recent election is hindering the betterment, peace and coexistence of the people. In a backdrop where the country's major political parties are scrambling to address various political scenarios which keep cropping up following the recent local authorities' election, parliamentarian Ravi Karanayake insists that the current government will continue to operate irrespective of various political views strewn about. The parliamentarian was addressing media following a function held in Colombo today. A felicitation ceremony for all the winning candidates of the United National Party who represented Colombo North was worked off this morning adjacent to the Totalanga Bridge under the patronage of MP Ravi Kona Naika. Politics is not an easy journey. Even now, there are various opinions about the current situation. But we will push this government further and will fulfill the promises given on the 8th of January in 2015. Don't be deterred by what is said in media, for it is not what is actually happening. The parliamentarian addressed media following the ceremony. I don't want to add my opinion given the complexity of the situation. There will be a plan to fulfill the people's expectations and we will see how that journey will start in a few days. One thing that is evident in the decision given by the people is that people are fed up of politics. I will talk about Colombo North. Irrespective of what's done by others, we won. When everyone was opposing, my people kept faith in me. The Chief Ministers of the Northern Province, C.V. Vigneshwaran, yesterday speculated on how the local authorities' election was won. Addressing media following a function held in Jaffna, the Chief Minister said that former President Mahindra Rajapaksha propagated racist ideologies to achieve victory. He also touched on how the country should move forward. I had already said that all parties should come together in line with a policy. If all are of the same policy, a good time will befall the Tamil parties. The current government will continue as it is for the next two years. Mahindra Rajapaksha got the votes by making statements bordering racism. Now he makes his son make statements to ensure there is no racist uprising. If they come to power, they may solve the issues of the Tamil community or cast them aside. I believe that all nine provinces should come together and and move forward under a federal system. The long-term solution will be decided upon the views put forth on the matter by Singhala parties. Minister of Petroleum Resources Development Arjuna Ranatunga today elaborated on government's plan to transform Kankasanture into a hub for fuel distribution in the northern and eastern provinces. The minister addressed fuel distributors in Library of Jaffna today. It will be profitable if we can transport fuel by train to Kankasanture from Colombo. Not only fuel, we will also generate employment in the region with the development process. I urge fuel stations not to pump kerosene into lorries and buses. It will not only incur a loss to the government, but it will also pollute the environment as well as being harmful to vehicles. We expect to transform Kankasanture into the hub of fuel distribution for the north and the east if we are able to set up a storage facility 
facility in Kankasanture. Not only that, we also hope to bring fuel to Kankasanture by way of a small ship for storage. In addition to our fuel stations, we also have IOC fuel stations in the country. We don't need more fuel stations of similar nature. That is why we are attempting to reduce expenditure and to move ahead while also considering your demands. Peradeniya Teaching Hospital became the first South Asian hospital to successfully perform 100 kidney transplants on children within 14 years. A kidney transplant improves the health and longevity of patients with kidney disease. Back in 2004, Peradeniya Teaching Hospital conducted their first transplant, which was a kidney transplant performed on a child. Since then, the hospital has performed 100 kidney transplants on children with great success. The hospital recently celebrated the 100 successful transplants. It is technically a difficult job to transplant a kidney to a child. We will insert an adult's kidney for a child with a weight of 10 to 12 kilograms. It is tough to take care of the child, especially breathing will be hard for the child when such a big organ is transplanted. So we have been doing something that has technically proven difficult. We did not arrive at the hospital in this condition. We were in critical condition. Compared to our earlier condition, we are happy to be in this state we are in today. My mother herself was my donor and she too is in a healthy condition. And I thank everybody involved in this process. You are watching Sri Lanka's premier news channel, Other Dharana 24 7. Let's now take a look at some other emerging stories making news across Sri Lanka. A group of locals in Sapugaskanda behaved aggressively in front of the Sapugaskanda police station last night in protest. The area residents behaved aggressively in protest of a group of supporters of a certain political party attacking a three-wheeler driver who is also an area resident as well as a supporter of another political party. Meanwhile, a similar incident was reported in the area of Kahatturua as the residents protested against police. The residents behaved in agitation accusing the police for not acting to save a youth who jumped into a canal. The youth was attempting to evade police while in possession of marijuana. A couple along with their child sustained injuries when their motorbike collided with a private bus driven by an intoxicated driver. The incident occurred in the area of Watavala and the injured were initially admitted to the Watavala base hospital and later the husband was transferred to the Candy Teaching Hospital in serious condition. The Manufacturing Sector Purchasing Managers Index saw a slow expansion in manufacturing activities, recording 51.7 index points last month from 59.1 index points in December 2017. Overall, all sub-indices of PMI except for stock of purchases sub-index recorded values above the neutral 50 threshold, signaling an overall expansion in January 2018. Moreover, the expectation for activities indicates an improvement for the next three months. Meanwhile, the services sector of the Purchasing Managers Index recorded 56.6 index points last month, from 61.2 index points in December last year. Now, according to the CBSL, the slow rate of expansion was mainly supported by new business, business activity, backlogs of work and expectations for activity sub-indices. The employment sub-index declined due to non-recruitment for vacancies of retired and resigned employees, mainly in financial services, healthcare and real estate activities sector. A bilateral agreement on air transport and a memorandum of understanding on sports was penned between Sri Lanka and Poland recently. According to the Minister of Foreign Affairs, State Minister for Foreign Affairs, Vasanta Sena Naik engaged in a two-day visit to Poland to conduct bilateral consultations to explore ways and means to promote political and economic relations. The State Minister and the Polish Deputy Minister of Foreign Affairs, Marek Magrowski, held bilateral consultations which covered areas such as cooperation in the fields of trade and investment, tourism, education, air connections, sports, green technology, maritime, combating climate change, increasing people-to-people -people contact and other areas of common interest. 
Meanwhile, the private sector representatives of the two countries were advised to continue their interaction for creating business awareness for sustained trade cooperation. German Chancellor Angela Merkel says a Brexit deal should strike a balance that ensures Britain clearly diverges from the European Union's single market while also keeping close economic ties with the bloc. Britain is hoping to negotiate a Brexit trade deal with the EU that maintains high levels of access to the bloc's single market. The EU says Britain will lose access if it sticks to its plan to end the free movement of workers from the bloc and no longer follow judgments of the European Court of Justice. We obviously have not changed our position on Great Britain's departure. We regret it, but we want to conduct negotiations in a way which allows for as constructive a partnership as possible even after Brexit, both economically and politically. We have referred in our discussions to the UK's vision for a bold and ambitious economic partnership once the UK leaves the European Union. Because I want to ensure that UK companies have the maximum freedom to trade and operate within German markets and for German businesses to do the same in the UK. U.S. Deputy Attorney General Rod Rosenstein says that Russian internet agency and more than a dozen Russians interfered in the U.S. election campaign from 2014 through 2016 in a multi-prolonged -pro effort with the aim of supporting then-businessman Donald Trump and disparaging his rival Hillary Clinton. The 37-page indictment filed by Special Counsel Robert Mueller described a conspiracy to disrupt the U.S. election by people who adopted false online personas to push divisive messages, travelled to the United States to collect intelligence and staged political rallies while posing as Americans. Russia's foreign minister, however, today dismissed as the charges levelled by the FBI Special Counsel against 13 Russians for election meddling as Blether. Sergey Lavrov said that he would not comment further until he saw facts. The indictment said Russia's Internet Research Agency had a strategic goal to sow discord in the U.S. political system, including the 2016 U.S. presidential election. The indictment broadly echoes the conclusions of a January 2017 U.S. intelligence community assessment, which found that Russia had meddled in the election and that its goals eventually included aiding Trump. The indictment names the Internet Research Agency based in St. Petersburg, Russia, 13 Russian nationals and two other companies. The conspiracy was part of a larger operation called Project Lakta. Internet Research Agency allegedly operated through Russian shell companies. It employed hundreds of people in its online operations, ranging from creators of fictitious personas to technical and administrative support with an annual budget of millions of dollars. The Russians also recruited and paid real Americans to engage in political activities, promote political campaigns, and stage political rallies. The defendants and their co-conspirators pretended to be grassroots activists. After the news broke of the indictment, Trump tweeted, Russia started their anti-U.S. campaign in 2014, long before I announced that I would run for president. The results of the election were not impacted. The Trump campaign did nothing wrong. No collusion. Pressure is mounting on the FBI over the agency's failure to act on a t tip that Florida school shooting suspect Nicholas, Nicholas Cruz might carry out an attack. Florida Governor Rick Scott said the agency's director must resign, while Attorney General Jeff Sessions ordered a review lamenting FBI failures. The Federal Bureau of Investigation admitted yesterday that it received a tip-off in early January about Nicholas Cruz, the suspected Florida school shooter who killed 17 people on Wednesday but failed to act. The FBI said in a statement that a person close to the shooter called the agency's tip line on the 5th of January to warn about Cruz's gun ownership, desire to kill people, erratic behaviour and disturbing social media posts, as well as the potential of him conducting a school shooting. On top of that, police had been called 39 times to the shooter's home, with the reported call-outs ranging from domestic disturbance to elder and child abuse. 
The FBI said that protocols were not followed for the January tip, which therefore meant the information was not provided to the Miami office and no further investigation was conducted at that time. A prolonged 7.2 magnitude quake that rocked Mexico yesterday left nearly a million homes and businesses without power in the capital and south. But deaths that were reported were surprisingly not because of the earthquake, but when a military helicopter crashed after surveying the aftermath. <laughs> At least 50 homes suffered devastation in the southern state of Oaxaca, which along with Mexican City that is still reeling from earthquakes that caused widespread damage in September. The epicenter was about 90 miles from a Pacific Coast surfer resort in the southern state of Oaxaca and had a depth of 15.3 miles according to the US Geological Survey. Meanwhile, at least two people died when a helicopter carrying Mexico's interior minister and the governor of Oaxaca crashed while trying to land after a tour of damage from the earthquake. The senior officials have reportedly survived. You are watching Sri Lanka's number one news channel, Other Therana 24-7. Bangladesh and Sri Lanka will face off for the final time in Sri Lanka's tour of the country tomorrow in the last of the T20 internationals. The Silet International Stadium will host the match which will get underway at 4.30pm Sri Lankan time. The first match of the two-match T20 series was all about the batting prowesses of both sides with the pitch offering little for the bowlers. The visitors, however, took full advantage of the conditions and romped to a six-wicket win. Prior to the victory, Sri Lanka had suffered eight consecutive defeats in the T20 format. The match was remarkable for Sri Lankans as it was the highest T20 run chase by the national side in the history of Sri Lankan cricket. The Jamaican women's bobsleigh team were training in Pyeongchang today after Brewery supplied them with a bobsled just in time to compete. The Jamaicans' participation in the Games was in doubt after the sudden departure of their coach, former Olympic and world champion Sandra Kiriasis, on Thursday. Kiriasis, who blamed her exit on an inexplicable demotion by team officials that she could not have accepted, was preparing for Jamaica's first female bobsled appearance at an Olympic Games. The Jamaican Bobsleigh Federation president said Kiriasis had been a destructive force on the team but the 43-year-old rejected the allegations and said she had been suddenly demoted to a position as the team's track analyst. The decision meant there was a dispute over who owned the bobsled, leaving the team in limbo, not sure if they would be able to compete. However, late on Thursday, a beer company sent a message on Twitter to the Jamaican bobsled team offering to supply a bobsled, with the Jamaicans replying to say they would be happy to talk about it. The IOC, however, said that it wasn't sure whether the deal between the beer company and Jamaica breached any IOC sponsorship or commercial rules. Moving on to tennis now, Roger Federer added yet another record to his vast collection when he guaranteed becoming the oldest ATP world number one by beating Dutchman Robin Haas 4-6-6-1-6-1 to reach the semi-finals in Rotterdam yesterday. Fresh from winning his 20th Grand Slam title in Melbourne this month, Federer took a wild card into the ABN Amro World Tennis event with his eyes fixed on a return to number one for the first time since November 2012 at the age of 36 and 195 days. Afterwards, he was presented with a trophy to mark his achievement and he addressed the crowd, which gave him a standing ovation. When you're older, you know, you feel like you have to put maybe sometimes double the work in. So this one maybe means the most to me throughout my career, getting to number one and enjoying it right here at 36, almost 37 years old is, is an absolute dream come true. I can't believe it. I'd like to thank my wife, my kids, my children, everybody. Let's now cross over to Shanla Fernando at the other there in a weather center for your forecast first evening edition. You are watching Sri Lanka's award-winning news channel, Other There 24-7.
A very good evening and welcome to Forecast First. Well, tomorrow will relatively be a cooler day to many areas of the country with temperatures ranging between 16 and 31 degrees Celsius with the lowest expected in the central hills. Well, looking at the map, we can expect clear skies over most parts of the island. Well, the sun will be very generous to many areas of the country, particularly to Jaffna, Waunia and Mena. Coming down, Colombo, Kandy, Nigambo and Gaul. But Matara in particular will experience some wet weather. And that's all we have from the Weather Centre tonight. Up next is your city by city forecast. And before we go, we'd like to leave you with breathtaking visuals of the Chinese New Year. From Mexico City to Tokyo, vibrant celebrations kicked off to usher in the Year of the Dog, which signifies loyalty. The festival is centuries old and celebrates the New Year according to the Chinese calendar. Hope you enjoy. Have a pleasant evening. The news and information 24 hours a day. This is Sri Lanka's premier news channel. Other Varana 24-7.